Hey gang, today we're going to talk about security. Most importantly, the seven steps or the best practices to use to get rid of viruses or malware. Whenever malware is detected on any devices, this is the steps you should take to make sure that you get rid of it. All right, so the first thing you need to do is identify what devices are actually infected and what kind of symptoms are they giving off. So this one is jacked up, this one is jacked up, and this one is jacked up. So identify what devices are actually infected. As Soon as you figure out what devices are infected, you have to immediately, immediately quarantine these devices. So that means that you disconnect them from the network, uh, whether it's Ethernet or Wi-Fi, right? That's another thing. So if you just uh, disconnect Ethernet, it may automatically connect to the Wi-Fi. So make sure that you unplug it from the physical Ethernet cable as well as the Wi-Fi hotspot. Okay, so first thing, identify which devices are jacked up. Second thing, actually quarantine those devices. And that doesn't just mean unplugging from the network, but actually taking those devices away from that environment and from the people that were using them and uh, dis uh, disconnecting from the network. The main reason you want to disconnect from the network and quarantine is just to make sure that it doesn't propagate and actually infect other devices on the network. Next thing you want to do after you quarantine is actually disable system restore. So if you don't know what system restore is, it's like a checkpoint. You know, when you used to play video games or if you still play video games, I haven't played a video game since, I don't know, can't remember, but uh, if you get a checkpoint, if you die, you get to go back to that save point in a video game. It's the same thing for a Windows operating system. You can create a restore point, and if you download something or something crazy happens, like if something that is not compatible with your system, you can actually revert back to your restore point. Just like we can roll back drivers, we can actually roll back to a restore point when our device was working the way we wanted it to. The reason we want to disable it is because let's say you get a crazy virus and you have the restore point set up to create a restore point every day and it creates a restore point for that day. And a couple months down the line, a couple weeks down the line, your computer starts acting crazy, it's not working the way you want it to, and you actually restore your system back to that restore point. So you're going to restore those viruses as well. All right. So that's why you want to disable restore. So um, you may be thinking because you're a super smart person that shit, if I get a virus, all I got to do is go back to a restore point. No, nah, not a good idea because a lot of viruses, they burrow themselves so deep inside of the system. It may be inside the registry. It's probably going to be inside the system files. And if you just create a restore point, it's probably still going to be remnants of the virus on your machine. And it's just going to start duplicating and tearing up your machine anyway. So just make sure that you follow these steps. Um, next thing is just getting the virus the hell off your computer, right? So you just want to make sure that you remedy uh, whatever it is. If it's a root kit, if it's a worm, if it's a Trojan, figure out what kind of virus it is and then get rid of it, right? And you can do this through virus scans, um, whether it be a quick scan, a deep dive scan, but you just want to make sure that you locate the virus and you eradicate it completely, right? Um, some viruses may even be inside the BIOS and affect the BIOS as well. So sometimes you actually have to remove things three, three, through um, or before the operating system even comes up, all right? So you may have to do some pre-installation or some pre-boot work as well but at a minimum you want to scan the uh, device or devices for malware figure out what a malware is and you may even want to use a couple different types of malware detection uh, you may want to use norton then you may want to use malware bytes but don't use them at the same time because if you run two antiviruses at the same time this antivirus i think this antivirus is actually a virus and it'll just be working against each other and it'll be pointless, all right? Uh, next up, schedule scans and updates. So after you actually scan and get rid of the virus, you wanna make sure that you set up a schedule for that device to get rescanned, just to make sure. Now let's say that 
every week or every couple of weeks, there's a complete virus scan of all the devices on the network. For the next 72 to seven days, 72 hours to seven days, I would say that you want to put extra emphasis on those devices. So they need to probably get scanned every day just to make sure there's no remnants, nothing left, that everything is cool, right? So just make sure that you um, have scheduled scans for those devices have an extra emphasis, but of course for the entire network just to make sure that if anything else funny is going on or if any other malware is present that it gets detected. Um, after you do that, you want to re-enable system restore, right? You want to not only re-enable re system restore on those devices, but you actually want to create a restore point because at this point, your device is good to go, no viruses, no compatibility issues, everything is good to go on the machine. So if a couple days down the road, a couple weeks down the road, something happens, you download something or you install something that's not really working correctly with the operating system, you can roll back to that restore point, okay? And last but not least, whoever had that device, right? Whether it was their fault, whether it was their fault or not, but especially if it was their fault, you need to educate the user. Like, hey man, this is what happened, and this is what we need to do to prevent it from happening the next time. But if for some crazy reason it does happen again, this is what you need to do. So have them review the acceptable use policy, which states this is what's good, this is what's not good, this is what you can do on the network, this is what you cannot do on the network. Tell them to avoid any weird websites. If you're not really working on something that pertains to work, then don't go to it and just make sure they understand if anything weird happens to contact the proper personnel. And if you think you have a virus, disconnect your machine immediately. They should, all the users should know that oh, I think something's wrong, let me disconnect from the network better safe than sorry just so it doesn't propagate throughout the entire network so those were the seven steps just run through it again first thing you need to do is identify the devices that are jacked up and have malware number two quarantine those devices and number three disable system restore number four get the damn virus off of the devices number five schedule um regular scans and updates number six Enable system restore, number seven, educate the end user. All right, gang, we went through the seven steps and best practices for removing malware. Other than that, I'll see you in the next lecture.